What is going on, everybody? What is up? What is up? Welcome to episode one of my favorite show. And her favorite show. She has, she don't have me on mute. (laughs) Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I am Amber, and you guys know this is Max, and we are starting a new Friday night episode called My Favorite Show. My favorite show. My favorite show. So welcome, you guys. Our um, thoughts for this episode is we're not selling. We're not auctioning. We are strictly here to talk to you guys about comics, everything related. Tonight is kind of a a free night, a fun night. We're going to talk about our origin stories. So how we got into the game, um, how long we've been doing it, um, those kind of things. Um, We're going to showcase some of Max's art that she's been doing um, and just take questions and suggestions from you guys. So thank you for hanging out with us. Still, we got to say it. Make sure you hit that thumbs up because sometimes we do giveaways, right? Yeah, we might do one tonight. We might we do might. one every show. We might do one every other show. We, we're we wild. We don't know. You don't know. Nobody you never knows. know. You never know. So like I said, this will be an ongoing thing. We will alternate channels. So we are starting here on the Creamer and Cash channel. Next week, we are starting on Max's channel. So make sure you're subbing to both. Sans has been in both. There is no rules to this show because we are not selling anything. But let's go through and say hi to some of the people that have joined us and are hanging out with us tonight. We've got Sans in the house. He says, way to go, you amazing ladies. Thank you, Sans. You set the precedent. We're just following. Andrew is in. What's up, Andrew? Thank you for joining. Hope you're still here hanging out. We know you're a little early, but that's okay. We don't mind. Del Otto was in the house. What's up, Del Otto? Del Otto, you are here. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. Freeze Comics. The Freeze Brothers are hanging out with us. Thank you, Freeze. We appreciate you both. Adam, what's up, Adam? Hiya. Soul Twice is in the house. Thank you, Soul, for hanging out with us. We appreciate it. Let's see, who else? We've got Card Shop. He says thumbs up. Always a thumbs up for you. Thank you, thank you. Joe W., evening everyone. Evening to you, Joe. Sands is binning both. All right, sold, even though we're not selling anything tonight. Here we go. All right, that is Max's YouTube, so make sure you sub her up. Next week, we'll be on her channel. Tate is in the house. What's up, Tate? What's going on? Hi, Tate. Hi, Tate. And this is my brother, Channel 1A7. Chris, what is going on? What's up? All right, guys. It's just me and Max tonight. Like I said, our future plans are maybe to have other people on, hanging out with us. Yes. Sponsored by Car Shop Reality, where you can make all of your card collecting dreams a reality. Car shop reality. I love it. There we go. She (laughs) she's flexing on us. All right. So like I said, tonight is just a night for us to hang out, get used to this kind of platform. Uh, Max and I are always used to auctioning. So we just want to hang out with you guys and talk. Um, We kind of thought our first topic would be an origin story of how Max and I got started in this industry. Um, because everybody always has a ton of questions. So Max, I'm going to ask you first. Okay. Um, when did you first start doing this collecting? Well, my first comic book I ever had was when I was a really little kid, probably like five, I had Sonic the Hedgehog and it probably got shredded to bits and pieces. No idea which number or any of that. Then fast forward in high school, I was really into Johnny the Homicidal Maniac. So I bought all of those single issues um, and I've had them ever since. And then I met this dude named Patrick, pretty cool dude. And he was super fucking nerdy. Awesome dude. But he was, he loves (laughs) comics and I couldn't believe how many he had. And I was like, the hell is this all about? And uh, 
just by hanging around him, I kind of wound up gaining an interest. And one time we went to a, uh, he, he asked me if I wanted to go with him to a local, it was like a, a con, a traveling con in the Midwestern tra traveling convention for comics. And it's at this hotel. And I said, oh, okay, sure. And I'm like really shy and we're all masked up and, and uh, trying not to bump into people. And it was really crowded because it was the since, first one since Corona. Um, and I picked out a book just to not be weird. And it was a ghostwriter book and it was a blank, the blank black cover, number one. And I liked it because it was very calming to me because all these flashing colors, all these people, I'm not good in social settings. And I've been isolated for the past year and a half because of <laughs> uh, yes. this, so I'm even worse at it. I haven't had any time to practice. So like, I liked the really calm, just peaceful, all black. And I was like, Nick Cage is pretty cool. So <laughs> right, <laughs> not that, and that's fine. I didn't consider myself a collector, but then uh, I, I step outside for some fresh air and Patrick comes out and he's like, here, I got you this. And he hands me another ghostwriter book because he saw me buy that one. And uh, so it's completely his fault that I started collecting comics because if I had just the one, I wouldn't be a collector. But once I had two, game over, man. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. That's stellar, though. That is super yeah. cool. So that's where your love from like ghostwriter comes from it yeah. kind of got you started and recently he's also right kick ass. Oh, yeah man. it was it was maybe like two years ago i don't know i'm not good at keeping track of dates i probably should have but no. I didn't. you don't need to keep a comic diary i think it was about yeah probably about it two years ago yeah maybe yeah I have no idea. Don't ask me. I don't know time. <laughs> no, that's doing cool. that when that's what matters. <laughs> that no, that that's totally cool. And you're right. Like you know, one thing I, that that I love about this co community is it's so welcoming. Whether you've been in it since you were a child or you got in it within the past few years. So you know, I I did not know this about Max, and I'm baffled because. I thought she had kind of been engulfed in this community for a really long time because you have a lot of knowledge. I've got ADHD and when you can hyper focus on stuff, like you get it like that. But if you lose interest like that, then you're I'm, I'm screwed. Fortunately, Look, I have not lost interest. So I think it's going to be a long time. And because it's always something new happening with it, like you never done with it. I feel yeah. like I'm going to continue that much into my old age. What's up, Steve Vines? What's up, Steve? Tate said basically what I said. So recent, and your knowledge is that of decades of a collector. I have good people to learn from, like this community, yeah. and I've, I learned stuff from Patrick. Um, I've, I'm learning tons from Remy. Like I, I teach him about modern. He teaches me about the older books when I'm yes. paying attention, anyways. So, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's fun. Yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that. So my story is not far off from yours. My story is not far off from yours. So um, I'm from the Pacific Northwest, Washington State, and we moved down here to the South in 2011. Um, and I went to a local comic shop, I don't know, within a year or two after that. And I went up to um, one of the guys that was working at this comic shop in the city that I'm in now. And I was like, I want to, I was with my husband. I was like, I want to get into comics. I want to read some comics. And he's like, okay, cool. I got one for you. And I, and I didn't want to read anything about Batman or Spider-Man or anything like that. I wanted to read something different. Um, he directed me towards a comic called Rat Queens. Oh, I, that has some cool cover. I have not read it yet though. <laughs> Good. Don't read it. Don't. <laughs> no, don't read it. Um, anyways, so I was like, okay, cool. I'll buy this. I took it home and I started reading it. I was like, this is, sorry. Oh, anybody likes it? I was like, it's not something I want to read. It definitely was very vulgar and yeah, I didn't like it. So that was probably, I want to say 2012, 2013. Um and then I went back and I picked up something from Stranger Comics and I was hooked. I oh, picked Stranger. up some Niobe and I was like, okay, 
okay, I'm hooked. So that was one of, <laughs> a Wendigo says, I love the Rat Queen story. Sorry, Preston. That's good to know about you. <laughs> Sorry, Preston. So I picked up something from Stranger Comics, a uh, Niobe comic, and I was instantly hooked. Um, read it and I fell in love with indie books. Um, I was, I was reading alongside it, some Batwoman just because that felt safe for me. Yeah, I was like, okay, look, I don't want to read Batman. I don't want to read Batgirl. Yeah. Like it was like, it was new 52 Batwoman. And I was like, okay, I can read this. I can do this. Um, and so if you guys don't know, I own a comic shop in Huntsville, Alabama, me and my husband, uh, we've been in business two years two years now it will be two years november 16th so we are just shy of two years um and to give you a little backstory around that uh shop started in a city about 30 minutes from where i'm at now um in ardmore alabama and it was on a whim so i also it's kind of random but i also make candles and I was selling candles in a little boutique in Ardmore. And um, the owner of that shop was like, there's a shop for rent right across the street. A little building for rent. Super cheap, you know. I called my husband one day and I was like, um, they got this shop for rent across the street. And I know you've been wanting to open a comic shop. And we dove in. We just did it. Like, literally, we're like... Hey, sign the lease. Actually, it wasn't even a lease. It was one of those, it's one of those towns where your smile and a handshake matters. Yeah. And we did it. We did it. Now we're back in Huntsville. Um, we are five minutes away. If you hit the light, it's five minutes. Yeah. Three minutes. It's so much better. Light. I remember yeah. the move like, and all the pictures and stuff. And I was like, oh, that's, that's going to be a lot better for her. For yes. Yes. Yeah. So I um, fell in love with comics, fell in love with collecting, fell in love with hoarding all the books I want to hoard. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a, a uh, dilemma itself. What's up, Patrick? We were just Patrick's talking about you. We love you too. Yes, you yes. We've got a ton of wonderful people joining. Um, Steve, you can. You can. I ship to multiple people. You absolutely mm -hmm. can. Yep. yep. Hit me up on IG. We will talk. We will get it done. I will ship out to you. Oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it's lemon flavor and there's no sugar in it. So two strikes. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, she'll she'll ship to you just like she does with auctions. She'll she'll Yep. She'll do a pull box for you. She did for me. Yep. That was gross. <laughs> Yes. What do you have in Patrick? So how long have you had your LCS for? Um, we're just shy of two years. Okay. Mid November. So when's the anniversary? Years. Yes. When November is it? 16th. November 16th. November 16th. I'm writing that down. November 16th is two years. Yep. Yep. Joe says, I got back into it when Powers and House of X came out. I bought that run, then asked my LCS what a hot comic to read was, and they handed me Something is Killing the Children number one. Yep. I've been hooked ever since. Lots of people have. I'll tell you what. I have to... Let's, let's hit on that. So that can bring us into indie books. Are indie books carrying the industry right now? Uh, they're definitely climbing the ladder and climbing it at a very steep incline and a quick rate. They're very efficiently climbing the ladder. They so, are very efficient. They are very efficient. And not to mention, I don't know if you guys know this, but have you if you pick up a raw Marvel comic book compared to an indie, it's the Marvel will melt in your fucking hands. Like, it's just, they've cheapened down. I get it, like, shorted the or paper. whatever on paper. But they got sturdier books when you're going with indies. And even DC, like, they're investing in the quality of the materials. 
And it's just kind of like, Marvel, come on, what are you doing, man? You're supposed to be leading the game, not this. Right. <laughs> but right. We always talk are, about, yeah, we always talk about DC and Marvel being the big two. But. I think it goes like Marvel. Hello. Marvel, DC, Indies usually. But now it's looking more like Marvel, Indies, DC. That's mm -hmm. how I see it anyways. Not a lot no, of people fill into DC. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, <laughs> she's got her cat on her lap. He just jumped up here. Yeah. I mean, indie books are definitely, um, I feel like they're, they're kind of holding on to new readers, people getting back into reading. Yeah. It's very easy to transition well, it's not all somebody. superheroes now it's not all this yeah. good versus evil it's there's a lot of really cool shit going on in, in these indies books like you've got a bunch of horror which everyone is gobbling up they and are. i don't blame them it's great there's a lot of it's giving it also indies are important because they give a lot of like freelancers or people who are just starting a, a easier chance at getting into the field of working whether it's art or writing penciling what have you it's it's easier to start at there and climb your way up, which That's I think very is true. Really cool. And you know what I like about indies? It's very easy to, um, like I said, get a new reader into a book when you don't have uh, crossovers, you don't have um, tie-ins. You can hand somebody a book and say, read this, and this is the only title that you need to read. You know, you don't have to go to, like, for example, the last one I know is King and Black. Uh, King and Black was what five titles long, but there were sixty three yeah. books, sixty three books in the yeah. entire reading order. So yeah. it's very easy Fine. to say, "Hey, here is Department of Truth. Here is House of Slaughter. You know, number one just came out this past week. Start here, read this, and go from there. You don't have to yeah. get anything else. You can get it's this not one like book, Killing the Children, like a uh, universe. Like, don't right. get me wrong." The MCU is very awesome because it's just so epically proportioned and everything's intertwined and has answers. That's great and all, but it's also very pricey. And don't get yes. started on the variants. Oh my god! Oh man! There was a huge oh, long ass discussion about that last night on uh, Poser's channel, I think, because we were painting at AM Cams and they were talking about it, and they all made some great points. If you ever want to check out that video about, like, they were talking about difference of paper shortages and like the um yes. just too many variants and yes is it really helping or hurting the comic book economy so, well what do you think about that i think there needs to be fewer variants and they were also talking about second print third print like we have what eight prints maybe nine of something's killing the children number one is that really necessary like we have we have eight currently oh but gosh. did you see what yeah. david Mack? See, yeah did you see yeah. what they posted Mm -hmm. Going forward, there will be one print. Yeah, a lot of places were saying one or two maximum, and they're just like, no, we're not doing that crap anymore. And I honestly like that for obvious reasons. But then you also wonder about ratios and exclusives. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. We'll see how so, the market handles that. Are we going to end up with a lot more ratios, a lot more exclusive variants? what's going to happen. Right. Right. Uh, Mr. W says agree fewer variants. Most people. 54 House of Slaughter covers is silly. It is silly. It is silly. It's like when they dropped the last run and then they had what 88 different. Oh my God. I think it was 88 or 89, you it's know, like they're different. doing what Lamparella does. Like with every issue they drop, there's like 80 different covers. It's like ridiculous. Yeah. Local shops much. rely on variants for profits. I am not a fan. That's, that's true. I mean, but that like, can be true, but not always. I'm like, just excited to see what happens. Like yeah. what, now that we're going down in prints and it's only going to be first prints, what's going to happen? How are it's going to be interesting? How's it going to be? It's definitely going to be interesting. Shops are going to have to very strategically order their first prints because that's all they're going to get. Yeah. 
And if they're damaged, are they still going to, are they going to get replacements? I mean, sometimes I you do. So. Sometimes you just get refunds. Depends on the book. Depends on the book. Steve says, I think that they should only have two covers and one sign variant. Steve, uh, that's a legitimate statement. Yes. All right. Uh, Card Shop says, I rely on selling old comics for profits, not variants. So that can bring me into another question. Another question. When... So you have, let, let's say something is killing the children. There is so many exclusives out there, a million of them, right? From um, issue one through 20 now, there's so many exclusives. When you order those, do you sell them to invest back in some older or do you buy them to keep? What do you do, Max? That's tough. I don't I, to keep I'm, I'm having this dilemma right now. And we had a conversation about this earlier today, me and Remy, about my collecting versus investing styles and how that needs to change. Um, I got it bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, most of them to sell, maybe a few to keep and several to send to get graded. So... Well, we're going to save the grading can of worms probably for another episode. Just so yeah. that I'm not here till 7 a.m. <laughs> Everyone arguing. <laughs> right. Joe says that he's buying variants that he likes the art to keep. Yes. That, that's what well, I that's do. I me. really love the art. Uh, I will buy it one extra just for me. So there's that. Yes. I agree. I agree. I, I buy the variants I want to keep for myself. Um, but I have lessened the variants that I buy to sell. Yeah. I've heard you mention that before. Like you're done. Like it's just, it seems like a waste because it's, it was fun at first, but now it's getting out of hand. Yeah, um, it really is. The but it's also of hard because you want to support all those artists and you might like all of these artists. So it's it's a real dilemma that a lot of people that collect, especially modern books, obviously, uh, are facing currently. Right. Who is your favorite artist, artist Max? Do you have David a Mack and Peach Momoko. Okay. Lovers. Yeah. You? Okay. Um, I don't I don't know that I have a favorite artist. Honestly, I don't know that I do. Um, I like some of what Peach Momoko puts out. I like some of Frizen. It just. Oh, yeah. Lachey. It, yeah. It just. Uh, yeah. Zoe Lachey. She puts out a lot of great stuff. Um, it just kind of depends on the book. Yeah. Yeah. And your spec, too, might have a hand in it. Sometimes it does. I'm a sucker for yes. some <laughs> Yeah, same here. I, I think we all have our own, a lot of the similar problems when it comes to collecting. And they're not necessarily problems, just uh, temptation is strong. And that FOMO is real. Temptation is extremely strong. Yeah. I am constantly, what? yes. Oh, no, go ahead. No, I was just saying I'm constantly clearing my cash. I'm like, oh, I can't do that right now. Not like a devil <laughs> on one shoulder and an angel on the other. And the angel is like being beat to death. <laughs> I know. So. Her favorite artist is Sans Group Collectibles. Oh, oh, well. No. <laughs> Does he draw? No. Okay. I didn't think so. I was like, hmm. Joe says, I got all the stray dog covers, including trade variants, and I'm done buying them all. I went wild as a horror fan. Oh, Joe, I feel you there. I feel you there. I gave up on Stray Dogs when nobody sent me my Blair Witch. And nobody in the in the comic community, I can say that. It was an eBay purchase. Um, and I gave up. I was like, no more. Oh, no. Is my internet dropping? Max. Sorry, my internet is being cranky. Okay. I, the, the one thing I was going to say, like, um, did you start out 
as a collector and then decide to become a seller or was selling always the goal? Um, not well, selling was, it was eventually the goal. It just came quicker than we anticipated. But it so, was on the, from the get go. It was like a, a part of the whole yes. plan. Okay. I have to say, I've got to give props to my husband because this was his dream. Yeah. He wanted to open up a comic book shop. He wanted to do all of this and it kind of fell in our laps. Like, honestly, it was like one day somebody was showing us a building and then the next day we had the keys and it was like, oh, snap. How do we get a diamond account? How do we get this account? How do we get that account? It, yeah. it was very quick. It happened extremely quickly. Um, but it became a passion of mine as well. Like super quick, super quick. It's nice to live in a community where people accept you and whether you have 30 years worth of knowledge or a few and they don't care. They don't yeah. care. Most as people are pretty nice. It. Yeah. As long Especially as you respect in the comic it. community, it's, it's pretty good. What? what? Um, <laughs> but I, I didn't start selling until I realized that I overdid it on the buying and that's kind of how <laughs> I came into it. You're like, and I got to get my money back. Yeah. I was like, shit. <laughs> And uh, so, and I actually got pretty good at it and I had a lot of fun doing it and I kept at it. And then uh, this other dude in California, like was walked, finally found these auctions. And he's like, oh snap. And decided to start selling with them uh, with us on Parker's channel. And uh, in the backstage, I was like, after the show, I was pricing out a bunch of Star Wars books that I got for hella cheap. And he was offering me some like 60 some bucks. And I was like, no, no, right. he, he tried to rob me. Um, they ended up selling for like 250. So <laughs> dick move, bro. But um, then we ended up um, talking a lot more and hanging out. And before you know it, we're on like the FaceTime all the time or duo, whatever you want to call it. And then uh, we met up and then uh, I sold all my shit except for my comics and moved down here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, now here I am. This is my full time job. Is selling comics. So you, so you only sell. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. So we've got a good question. Um, let me find it and highlight it. So Max, because this is your business, as a business, do variants outweigh older comics as far as building capital is concerned? Here's the thing: new comics are like this. They're like woo, woo. they might. There's a small chance they might go up. The big books, the keys from back in the day, they're always getting they're 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 steady up. They might get a few bumps up, but they're not going down. Right. Uh, like your whole well, 21 and stuff like that. It's not going down. It's not going anywhere. Okay. Yes. It's really a lot more fluid and harder to predict with these modern things and variants than it is with older comic books. But then yes. again, sometimes you have a dollar book that jumps off the charts from back in the 80s or something just because of one little key someone realized and made the connection to a movie that's being released or whatever. And now all of a sudden it's jumped. But guess what? In a month or two, it's going to go back down slowly but surely. So very true. Very point. true. Yes. My two thoughts on that is I agree. I agree. Um, modern books, like she said, it's a roller coaster. You know what I mean? It is a roller coaster ride for modern books. But what you will find is Bronze Age and previous, they will hold their value no matter what. They might fluctuate a bit just depending on the market. You might see some spikes in them depending on what movie or what show is being released. But there's always market correction as well. Um, but it, you, you never know with the modern books. They are amazing reads. They are great, great reads. Um, but to strictly buy that, just to only buy modern and hope that you're doing a great investment, I would say that's a scary thought. You know? Yeah, it is scary. I'll tell you that because you don't know. Like, yeah. Now, now everybody wants to buy the first issue of every Boom or Aftershock book because of Something's Killing the Children, because of We Live. And that's not 
that's just not feasible right. necessarily. And I'm, I'm, I try to judge as best as I can because you never know what's going to pop off, but it, it's, it's really tough to gauge it. I, I'd say it's worth it though. Cause if you end up spending $80 on like 20 number ones and one of them pops off, well, you're probably going to make your money back. But, right. But still it's a risk because what if none of them pop off? Now you're stuck with that. And that's very <laughs> true. That's very true. <laughs> and that's a good question, Sam. So how do you find the next Ultimate Fallout 4? Because that's pretty much a modern book. Um, oh, you, buy them, you buy them at cover price. And, and you wait. You know what I mean? And you see what happens. But if you look at Ultimate Fallout 4, um, that's a first print. That somebody got at cover price. You know what I mean? And that's what's holding its value. It is the first appearance of Miles Morales. Um mm -hmm. So holding on to modern books is not a bad idea, but buying them aftermarket can be a little scary, right? Yeah. It can be scary. So, and at the same time, what do we always say? Buy what you like. I always Buy like, you, if you I'm like. selling something, it's because I picked it up. And if I picked it up, chances are 90% of the time, it's because I liked it. I liked that cover. I like yep. the art. I like the premise of the story. I like the person who did this or any any number of things, but it's because it appealed to me and I'm hoping that people will enjoy the things that I choose. That's kind of how we build our customer base, which is cool yeah. and allows for a lot of diversity. Yeah. And I do have to say with the modern books that are coming out recently, because um, most of them are indie books, that are really kind of spiking and you've got shows or movies coming along with them. Um, I don't think that, I think there might be spikes in prices, but I don't think that they'll ever just bottom out. They, they will correct themselves, but you have something is killing the children department of truth. Those are going to withstand some value. Um, we live, they're going to withstand Stuff some option. value. Stuff that's optioned for sure. Stuff that's it optioned because it created for sure. a whole new universe. Yes. For, yes. In the boom, boom universe. And I'll tell you, I will tell you, owning a shop, when people come in and they say, I want to read a comic or I don't know what to buy, the first place I take them is indie books. And I'm like, tell me what kind of movies you like, what kind of shows do you want to watch? You will like this book. And it's been optioned, so you can't go wrong. These shows are going to kill it. Um, it is going to increase the value in these indie books, the modern indie books. So, yes, it it, it can be scary, but it, it it's not. It's going to be safe. You're you're going to be safe because. That yeah, that leads us to another question we had mentioned before the show. When, when is the best time to sell? When it's announced or when it drops? That's I'm just going to keep it. Trailers. By giving you two choices. If you want to talk about selling, it's trailers. If you want to get the best bang for your buck, it's when trailers come out. Mm-hmm. Yep. 100% agree. That's why I'm still right. sitting on a stack of Noctera. <laughs> I know. I have a short box full of it. All right. Adam book. wants to know which books are you reading now that you really like? Max, answer first. I don't know. Um, I, I confuse stories sometimes too, though. Um, it's been a minute. I have a big stack that's ever growing. Lila Star is one that I really want to read. Uh, back in Omaha, there was this LCS that I really loved called Legends Comics and Coffee. And mm -hmm. it was like all girls there, all the employees, and they were so nice and sweet. And they do a little talk show every Thursday night. And I try to catch them when I can. Otherwise, I uh, check out their posts on Instagram. And they love Lila, the many deaths of Lila Star. So that's mm -hmm. at the top of my reading list next. Um, the sad part is that I'm a little too busy to read all the time. Like me and Remy were talking the other day about taking an actual vacation sometime where we just like go and have nothing to do with any of y'all and just read in a forest somewhere in a nice little cabin or something <laughs> like rent out Ooh. a cabin and just go bring us a couple short boxes and re power through them for like four days straight. <laughs> and it, that would maybe, be heaven. I know. Right. So, cause we're both really behind on our yeah. reading, but I have read porcelain most recently, I believe I'm 
I've read through issue two and I think I just picked up three today. I had three weeks, three new comic book days worth of books that I picked up today. So I'll be reading um, Porcelain issue number three soon, hopefully. Um, but I did like it. It's it's interesting. It's kind of a little bit Kafkaesque plus desert plus horror. And so I, I'd recommend trying it and it's still at cover price. I haven't seen it like pop up or anything. It's by a blaze, I believe. Yeah. Um, but I yep. do really like the art style in it too. Okay, cool. Um, well, you guys all know that I'm always reading DOT. It is the one book that I keep up on. Um, I recent I read House of Slaughter. Um, I really want to read um, By the Horns. I've heard great things about it and I never started reading it, but I need to find me an issue number one because issue number ones always sell out. Um, so I have like two, three, I think I'm missing number four, five and up. Um, but I thought, or I heard that that was a really good read. Um, but I've, I don't know, I've gone back to some of the old ones. Um, I'm reading uh, Superior Spider-Man. Oh, how's that? It's not, out? it's not old, but you know, it's a good one. Um, Brand new, but it's a, yeah, it's a good one. It's a good story. I always wanted to read some ASM, um, but I didn't know where to start. So starting at story arcs is really good. If you can get like a complete story that you could read that may be a little bit shorter to kind of see if you even like that, you know, particular writing style or that character, that's a great way to do it. Superior Spider-Man is only 33 issues long, so it's not super long. Um, yes. And Out of Body, I heard that's good. Um, Last Flight Out. I read a lot of indie books. Last Flight Out. Um, if you want to start reading Spawn, Spawn Universe is a great way to start because there's, what, 323 issues? Now? Yeah. Yeah. It's like yes. a, <laughs> nearing 350. Something. Right. So, um, you know, yeah. starting at the beginning of a story I'm arc solid. is the way to go. So, yes, great, great question there. Um, I'm not reading anything in DC. Who I is? No, Some people I have, are. I've read Ragman and I love that. We all know that from a long time ago story I did. I take that back. I'm reading Nice House on the Lake, which to okay, me is still an indie that's, book. That's borderline. I'll let it I slide, was like, that's still an indie book. Exactly. <laughs> come on. That doesn't count. I know. We it's got a so question different. from. Flip and Steve, he wants to know how the popularity of grading changed the market and has it changed the way you invest? Being someone in sports cards business, I had to ask the question. This is such a big question. We're going to spend too much time. It's on a it, loaded it. question. So it's, oh, I can't do this without ranting. Um, well, now it's Let a big book. So thanks for that, everyone. No. <laughs> Um, the popularity of grading has changed the market. Yes. So much. It, people will so let me say this. When COVID hit, everybody in the world became a flipper. Whether it was cards, Pokemon cards, sports cards, comic books, everybody had to find a way to sustain. So it did change. Um, for me personally, People I would rather me. I would rather sell a raw book. I would rather yeah. sell a raw book than a slab. I would rather give you my best guess and best overview of the grade of the book and let you make that decision than unless it's a hard market. It's a hard market. Also, what I can say is books are fluctuating so quickly and the grading companies are so far behind. Even in grading cards. Oh my God. Cards and comics. Yes. So back yes. the frick up. Yes. Uh, Anne, there you go, Anne. Some people there say it's just a really fancy casket, like, that you can never open for your book. It's where books go to die. And I, that stuck with me. I'm like, yeah, it's most, I, I don't have many 
PC slab books. Most slabs are for selling, in my opinion. But right. I have like six that are personal, and that's it. And I have like three that I'm selling right now. Like I don't, I don't have a lot of slabs. Like, do I want to slab stuff? Yes. Why do I want to do that? Because I'm probably gonna sell it. But you've got to wait for six to eight months mm -hmm. to get it back. And you got to have your fingers crossed that it doesn't drop off between that that timeline, you know, or that right. the, the trailer hasn't or the movie hasn't already dropped. And then you finally get your books back and people are like, oh, cool. But I agree. I agree with what Anne says. We buy books because we want to read them. Um, what I like to do personally is read books as the single issues come out and then um, I buy the trade. Mm -hmm. And then I will sell off the individuals because really to me, it's just about reading the story, right? Yeah. Patrick would if do I'm that I'm going to collect something, it's going to be a Silver Age book. I will slab a Silver Age book and keep it. Yes, because that's to preserve it and to certify yes. it. Why would you need that with a modern book? What happened? Has it, ha it, has it been exposed to decades of potential wear and damage? No, right. it's fucking modern. You don't need to slab it. Like, I get it, but at the same time, it's also just so ridiculous. Yep. CBCS just yep. raised their prices and grading and turnaround times. Everybody has. So, uh, I that email yesterday. We will go over CGC versus CBCS another show because that could take an entire That's segment. A huge can Trust opener. us. So, we will and not I've touch got my on can that. opener. Um, once you slab it, you are saving history. And that is absolutely true as well. That mm -hmm. is true as well. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, what about a silver age NFT that you can read? No, okay. I'm going to fuck with NFTs right now. I'm, sure I'm not doing them. NFTs. I am not doing NFTs. I don't know that I will ever do them. Probably another show for us. Uh, I we, still have to freaking figure them out. I've read like three different articles about them and I'm still like only barely grasping onto what the hell that means. An NFT. Yeah. Like you sell a piece of artwork and apparently it's bad for the environment and it's laundering, laundering, money laundering for rich people is some other takes on it. Those are the negative. <laughs> money laundering for rich people. I yeah. love it. I love it. I love it. There's your comic book uh, story. Somebody go write. There's your writing prompt. <laughs> Mike says the NFT, NFT the water. new pet rocks. Oh my god! Every, I know. I know. Spent thousands of dollars for NFT of a pet rock or something. I so, I completely cool. understand the the concept around NFTs. I get that. I completely get that. Um, me personally, I like to hold something in my hands and read it. Now, trust, if I'm going to read an X-Men number one, I'm not, if I had an X-Men number one, I'm not cracking it. I'm not reading it. I'm reading it digitally. Mm -hmm. But um, it's, it's not something that I personally am going to invest in. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. If, if, if it comes back to bite me in the ass and Adam I end up broke and everybody else ends up rich, that's my risk. I might dabble in it, but like I would put a like a, like when I go into a casino, like I'm like I'm bringing in forty bucks. Once it's gone, I leave. Once it's doubled, I leave. Whichever one happens, no ATM, nothing else. And so like I might right. be like, yeah, I'll put forty down for some NFTs just to fuck around, see what it's about. Right. And, but then that's it, you know. Like I'm not gonna do more. <laughs> I'm just gonna yep. keep doubling my money, or I'm gonna say, well, that sucked, and move on with my life. I don't know if it's gonna work like that because I, like I said, I still, um, I'm still trying to understand what the hell they are. But that's the one sign that I'm getting old. Oh no, <laughs> I don't understand this new right. crazy stuff the kids are doing like, these days. You're like a comic book or collectible that you can't hold. I don't Why understand. though? No. I don't understand. You guys, we want to do a giveaway tonight. We are at 27 likes. Three more likes. We're going to give something away. Three more. It's our first show premiere of my favorite show. So we appreciate you guys hanging out. Um, so let's, uh, uh, Max. Yes. Max. Yeah. You've got some stuff going on in Cali 
at an LCS of somebody that we know in the community. Yes. What do you got going on over there? What are you guys doing Some at little... AMPM Comics? AM KM Comics. Um, let's see, window. Hang on, I'm gonna figure out how to screen share. Fuck it, you guys can see my entire screen. I don't mind. Um, Hello to everybody that's joining while she's clicking away. Thank you, CLG, for joining. We love y'all. All right, let's share her screen. Woo. Okay. Whoa. So, here's where we left off last night, if you can see. Um. Let me make, can I make this solo? There we go. Um. So those are pictures that aren't great, but let's see how this video goes. Oh, that is dope. But yeah, we're basically done with it. The only things we're going to do is a few more like touch-ups and stuff. Um, you want me to stop sharing? No, I'm, I'm, I've got a bunch of you got more? pictures of the finished thing that will be getting uploaded probably but it's from the zoe lachey i think it was issue number 14 cover that yep that I, I voted for the other i feel so bad now like i added these claws in and like it slipped it like cut on her wrist and like he did the he finally did the uh, chainsaw it just needs a few more touch-ups but yeah if you are in the area it's in am cams is in um colton california kind of near ontario and stuff but i don't know which ones i've already opened and which i haven't okay i like this one so if you can see there on the belt buckle i put their logo amcam like it looks like the actual logo um here we go this one will be better yeah there's the logo <laughs> so it's really fun. I hope you guys can check it out. Thanks for all the support. I'm done. Hi. That's it <laughs> for pictures. If you want to take me out. Oh, no. Hello. She's muted. I thought my internet dropped. Oh, no, you're good. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're good. I was concerned. I was like, am I going to have to beat up some technicians or something? No. Okay. I had children pop it in. That's all good. That is dope. So yeah. you and Remy did that. Yeah. He does. Uh, he was really good at doing the base, the bases, and I was pretty good at getting the tiny details and all that texture and stuff. That's kind of like my jam is the little stuff. He's really great at the big picture stuff, which is kind of like what a mural is, is big picture. So, nice. <laughs> so it was it. a great project. We had a lot of fun, uh, especially hanging out with AM Cam, meeting some of their customers, meet, meeting some of you guys um, as you came into the shop. That was really fun too. But yeah, we might be bringing a few paintbrushes and a couple cups of paint like uh, every Wednesday when we go pick up new comic book days, books there and just touch up the little tiny things that are bothering us. But it's basically finished. All we have to do now, I think, is to sign it. And I have some paint oh, for that, yes. too. So That'll be so dope. I love yeah. it. I love it. So how long have you guys been working on that? Um, Non-consecutive right? six days. Six days six. non-consecutively. So not in a row. Okay. It was gotcha. like three days, then two days, then two days. So maybe seven days. Like Wow. But not even, not always full days. But yeah, we uh, just push, try to push hard through it. Yeah, and, it seems uh, way longer than that. But maybe because it happened over out. like yeah. weeks span. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool, cool. I love it. I love it. If you guys didn't know, as you can tell, Max is an artist and herself. So you can commission her for some work too. I have blanks or I can just draw on papers and stuff. And the thing that I send, this is like your COA, or if you want a gold label, you send this with the book and it has proof of the date it was created with my signature and verification information. Just thought I'd throw that in for fun, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Something's yeah. painting the wall. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> Max is working on an Octera number one. 
Oh, so that's another book. If you haven't run, read Noctera, oh, yeah. read Noctera. Are we, get, Sam says, giveaway, giveaways. We are at 35 likes. We want to do a giveaway. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Do we have a question ready? Mm -hmm. I've got lots of questions. We will do a double giveaway. A double giveaway. Got my Hawkeye today, Max. You did that for Ghostface? That Hawkeye? Yeah. Oh, he's local to me. Oh, yeah? The the one yeah. with the green? The green lady? The Robin Hood with a Y? That Hawkeye? I don't know. I don't or, know. What's his name? Sean Ghostface. Oh, Ghostface. Oh, Ghostface. yes. That, that one with the Hydra logo. The Hydra logo. So I, I did, and I... I Full disclosure, this when I auctioned it, but I was like, I have, I fucked up on this one. So I made an identical one for the person who originally like bought the book to be commissioned. And then I auctioned the one that I kind of fucked up on that looks almost identical and uh, go, uh, go space to win it. So I'm glad nice. you like it. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Okay. We're going to do a giveaway because why not? Max, you got I a like book you're going to give away? In honor of Halloween, I'm going to do this. We're going to have one question. One. Each? No. Or one question. Both of these. I have, I, have, I have some questions ready from, so let's do this for one person. Or do you want to do each individual? That's up to you. We don't live in, close to each other, so maybe two to separate. Okay. All but right. If I don't know how it works. I don't know anything. <laughs> Well, we will do, let, let me do Red Room. Max, you got a question you want to get ready? Uh, yeah, I'm going to think of one while Okay. Do you want me to drop you a start line? Yes, hold on. Let me. Just let me know when to fi fire. All right, fire. Fire, fire, fire. All right. So this is Halloween related. I'm reading from my sheet. What is Jason's first murder weapon and who does he kill first? Jason's first murder weapon and who does he kill first? <laughs> is mom no no and what's up tricky oh wait 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 preston got it ice pick and alex or i'm sorry alex alice hardy she was a camp counselor yes ice pick and alice so preston nice. you got it my friend this is yours this is yours in honor of Halloween, we've got Red Room number one. What is this? Like the fifth print, third band in a million countries. Can Acid A Amber open the shop from earlier tonight? I won't answer. Good luck, y'all. Ah, oh, that would have that would have been a good one. That would have been a good one. All right, Preston is local to me, so this is going in your box. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in giveaway for you you got it you got it we're not auctioning but we appreciate all you guys tuning in this is going to be a weekly thing uh with max and myself all right max you got a question are you all ready i got it yeah, let, me, let me make you solo and drop you hold on hold on let me drop you a start line i did it oh you did okay I got excited. <laughs> First appearance. And what year was the book released? Everybody's Googling furiously. First appearance. And what year was the book released? This is the free giveaway. Pack of what? Yeah, I'll take $95. 95 so You have to name the book and the year it was released. Of what's the question? 
Uh, Kushala, the Demon Rider, first appearance in what year was the book released? Did it, does, is it showing up in the chat? Um, so she is a spirit of vengeance. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. Demon Rider. I don't know this, so you're going to have to tell me when somebody gets it right. I'm watching. Okay, good. Nobody's tell me who the right highlight is. Tell you me guys, who don't, confu highlight. don't confuse her with Alejandra Jones. It is where, oh yeah, the, the starting line is there, yeah. Nope, not yet. At least give me the title. Come on. I'll let you guys so fun, I don't know this. Oh geez, she's the, she's a, okay. She is the demon writer Kushala. <laughs> First appearance of Ghostface. That's in Wu Tang. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's um. So she is a a ghost writer, but she's also a sorcerer supreme. That's your next hint. That's a hint. You guys usually aren't supposed to have hints. Just Kushala. She's a Native American. She was an Apache. Can I answer? I mean, I'm just kidding. Private <laughs> chat. Uh, Adam says, Google says 2016 Dr. Strains and the Sorcerer Supreme's number one. Is that right? Yep. yep. Oh, Adam, you got it. You got Google's it. Google's the fastest. Wow. That was, that was, I'm sorry. I didn't think that would take that long. Dr. No. Strains, Sorcerer Supreme issue number one released on October, 2016. Okay. All right. Okay, well done. I put me. the end line for the giveaway. You guys, we are just here to have fun with you, giving away some books, having a blast. Um, so we are reaching an hour and our goal was to keep it kind of around an hour. But do you guys have any questions? Drop them in the private chat. We in will, or not the private chat, the, the live chat. And we will answer them as we go adam says i i feel don't feel embarrassed you got it right you won it's okay most people google anyways another thing i would I have to mention, google that all right my definitely wants to open an lcs he's thinking about he wants to do it he's he just really wants to do it that's all i'm going to say about that um while you guys think of questions for us i yep. will show you this amazing statue I got from Tricky Trapster, a ghostwriter. It's super dope. I was, I don't know why my phone's flashlight wasn't working because I tried to turn it on earlier so that I could show you guys. And it's just, it's not doing it. <laughs> she needs a new phone. Probably. I don't know. But yeah, it's neat. I'm super stoked. I was happy to unbox it. Um, Ian, I don't see any questions coming in, but let me say this, you guys. Um, this was our, I'm going to call it our pilot episode of Amber and Max. We're going to do this every Friday. Next week, we'll, we, we will be on Max's channel. So let me drop her oh my youtube links in the private yep so i just dropped max's youtube link um it's also in the description of this video you guys have to sub up to her because next week that's where we'll be hanging out same time same well youtube same place but we'll, it will be on Max's channel because our goal is to just hang out with you guys, Whoa. chop it up, grow our channels together. Um, something a little bit different than auctions. I know you guys always see us on auctions selling, but you know, we want to know and we want to talk to you guys on the regular without yeah. uh, having to throw up some books. We will have guests card shop. Yes. So our, our goal is to kind of uh, maybe
maybe do some interviews, get some guests on, um, do some other things that you guys just don't see from us. You know what I mean? We don't do enough of it. So how to give grades for selling. Maybe, yes, I think maybe sometime later this week, I might do, just go through. I have these two boxes behind this lovely ghostwriter statue. They are books that I want to send to be graded and maybe I'll just go live for a little bit to chill and you people can hop on and tell me if I should grade it or shouldn't. I thought there you go. that would be fun. And I need more go. content on my uh, YouTube so that uh, I actually don't feel guilty about people sub subbing me up. <laughs> yes. And you know what, Tate, that is a great question. And it is a very big question, how to give grades um, for books. So that is a loaded question in itself. Absolutely all the way. That is that could take up an entire show. Um, I'm, I'm taking notes. I still write on paper. I was um, taking notes on an electronic notepad. <laughs> that's why I said I'm, 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 you know, taking notes. Uh, grading on books. Grading on books takes time and it takes a lot of practice. And part of that is mentally grading a book that you have and you're like, okay, this is what I think it is. But then sending it in to one of the grading services and it coming back and then you're going, okay, let's say it was a 7-0. And so you're looking at the notes and you're saying, this is what I see. This is what I noted. So where do I, where do I need to adjust from there? Nine eights are easy to grade, right? Older books are super hard. Yeah. I'm really good at grading anything in the higher end, like eight O and up. I'm pretty good at eyeballing it, but the other stuff, I'm just like, Remy. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, like, I don't know. You you have to look at them in different light. You've got to yeah. pay attention to fingerprints, smudges. Lens. If you're really serious about it, that's what I did. I got a jeweler's lens, get a black light, you know, uh, especially that if you're important. trying to tell if someone retouched it and is like faked it, like if there was a, a really bad scratch on it and they covered it up with a marker or something, like you can tell that with a black light. So. Hey, question. Recommendations on Netflix. You, season three, I watched it. I binged it. It was my least favorite. It's a little chaotic. Yeah, it's it's a lot more to uh, keep in your noggin. I was like, okay, they want a little cray cray. They want a little cray cray with all the murders and you, season three. Let's keep it real. Um, Netflix shows Lock and Key. Oh, Just I like Lock and Key. Black, black and key. Black, black and key. And key. Riverdale. I mean, who doesn't want to watch some Archie? I haven't seen that. I've watched yeah, Sabrina. You... I've watched the Sabrina one. Like it's Midnight Mass. Great, but I like it. I enjoy it as long as I'm not comparing it to other Sabrina stuff that I know about. Like I can laugh at it. It gets a little weird and like cliche, hella cliche, but I mean, it's something fun, you know? It's just interesting yes. to me. All right. Um, let me answer this. I'm going to give Max a little break. I'm going to go solo. I'll so I'm going to yeah, go. I saw your private chat. Okay. All right. So yes, Midnight Mass was amazing. I have not seen Wu-Tang. I have not watched Wu-Tang yet. I, I don't know why, but Midnight Mass was amazing. Um, Squid Games. Oh, so if you like Squid Games, what was the other one? What was the other one is, let me pull up, what was it? Somebody help me out because I actually liked it better than Squid Games. Somebody help me in the private chat. You know what I'm thinking. You know what I'm thinking. It was another show that was very similar to Squid Game. Who knows it? Alice in Borderland. There we go. Yep. Alice in Borderland. It was amazing. I actually liked it more than Squid Game. It was stellar. It was stellar. Um, if you're not watching The Walking Dead, I don't know what y'all are doing. But new season dropped on AMC+. 
And then you've got Fear the Walking Dead and all the spinoffs. Yes. So amazing shows, super fun. Um, what do we have coming up? Okay. So random thoughts. If you guys have, do, have you guys watched or read any of Robert Jordan's books like The Wheel of Time? Anybody? 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 If you like that like medieval kind of like fairy tale, um, that show is dropping uh, November 19th. I think it might be on um, HBO Max or something like that. But that I'm so looking forward to. Um, and then you've got Hawkeye, November 24th. Oh, yeah. They left us with that cliffhanger on Black Widow. And now we're going to finally get to see it. They, they're pumping out the movies, man. It's hard to keep up, but it's, it's worth it. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. The Wheel of Time is amazing. It's what, um, 13 or 14 books long right now. So. Wheel of Time. Yes. Robert yeah, Jordan. Lennon? Oh, so he, no, Robert Jordan, he, he was, he was a Wheel novelist. Of worlds. I'm confusing it with Wheel of Worlds. Yes. <laughs> he was a novelist. I've got two of his hardcovers right here. So you've got the Wheel of Time. Um, what is it? Uh, the Eye of the World is book number one and The Great Hunt. Um, they had comics related to that. And so if you guys have those comics, I want them. Let me know. Hit me up. I want them. I want them. I want them. Yes. All right. So that is what I am watching on the tubes, Netflix, the TV, whatever. He said, see you in the background. I was like, who? Who said? <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, there is an... Oh, so if you did not watch the past past credits of Black Widow, go back and do so. Go back and I do did. so. Okay. Pretty sure. Like, you I was the see. one who was like, no, let's stay, guys. Let's stay. You never yes. know with these fuckers. <laughs> they like they like hiding those Easter eggs pretty deep sometimes. Holy crap. Amber, Sid, and you see Joe M's message. What did he put? What? He's so doing... What? Something is killing the children. Uh, I don't know what that means. It's true what are we talking about he's doing sick sick i don't know i don't know what that means all right guys we have been on for just over an hour we appreciate you guys if you're not subbed up to my girl max you have to do so now because I am dropping her YouTube now. So we will be on her channel this next Friday. Be there or be sad. Or square. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we'll, we'll do our best every time. And we enjoy the participation from the community so much. Yes. That's the whole point of this. So, yeah, if you've got suggestions, questions, something fun, idea, like feel free to DM us. It's we cool. might, maybe we'll do some stuff on Instagram where we'll ask some questions, um, put them in our stories. So pay attention to that. And uh, we, we just want to chat with you guys. So whatever questions you have is what we want to answer, right? Yes. All right. Let me show this uh, at the end. Adios, my friends. We are out of here. Thank you guys for hanging out with us for just about an hour. We are on Question. Streamer and Cash right now. Next week, we will be on Max Comics. Hey, wait. Damn it. Every time. Every freaking time. I know. I know. 
We love you guys. Thank you for hanging out with us two ladies. And we will see you next Friday on this channel. But in the meantime, you know you will find us on some auctions. We will be around and we are on Instagram. Hit us up. Let's chat. We love y'all. Adios. You gotta do the back to back Adios. thing. Like on. Oh, I gotta. Okay, let me end this. <laughs>